Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be testing the AMD 7800X T. And now I'm gonna stop myself right there. I already made a video about the 7800X T last week when paired with a higher end CPU. However, I wanna see how the 7800X T performs when paired with a budget processor like the 5500, which is under $100, and how it performs with a mid-level processor like the 5600X. I know some people may be saying, why would you pair a $100 CPU with a $500 GPU? And all I have to say to you is, Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. <laughs> Uh, my bad, that was the wrong clip. But it doesn't matter what you think, that's what we're doing. So we're gonna pair three different AM4 processors at three different price points. And we'll run some benchmarks and we'll do some gaming. We're gonna play Cyberpunk, Starfield, and other AAA games. And we'll see how a cheap, a mid-level, and a high-end CPU perform when paired with the 7800 XT. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. If we're looking at the 7800 XT, this particular one is the XFX version. Now, in my opinion, I think this is the best 1440p card you can get around $500. 16 gigs of VRAM, outperforms the 4060 Ti and the 4070, all while being around $100 cheaper than the 4070. By no means is this card a budget-friendly card. It's kind of like entry level to the high end, but like I said, this is the best GPU you can get for around $500. Now, when you compare the AMD processors we're testing out today, the 5500 being under $100 is a perfect budget-friendly processor. Yes, it doesn't support PCIe 4.0, but to be honest, that doesn't really matter in gaming. Now, the 5600X is the oldest of the bunch coming out in 2020, but it's still very relevant in 2023. This is actually the processor I'd recommend for mid-level builds because of the performance you get for under $150. Now, the 5800X 3D, it's about double the price as the 5600X and triple the price of the 5500. You'll get a bump in cores and threads. You'll get AMD 3D vCache technology, which does help in gaming, and it's the best that AM4 has to offer when it comes to gaming. But at double and triple the price, I really doubt we're gonna get double and triple the performance. Did I mention it also doesn't come with a stock cooler? <laughs> Now, when you compare them in the multi-core test in Cinebench, obviously with more cores and more threads, the 5800X 3D is going to outperform these two processors. You'll get about a 27% increase over the 5600X and about a 32% increase over the 5500. Now, when you compare them in the single core test, which is more important for gaming, the 5800X 3D scores are almost identical to the 5600X and is only about 5% better than the 5500. Hmm. Now, how about actual gaming benchmarks when paired with the 7800X T? When you compare the 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme test, the differences between the 5800X 3D and the 5600X is about 4%. Between the 5500 is about 9%. Now when you compare it to the Time Spy Gaming Benchmark, it's more of a CPU dependent test. You'll see about a 10% difference between the 5800X 3D and the 5600X, and a 12% increase over the 5500. So by looking at these scores, you may ask yourself, well, how does this translate into actual gaming? We're getting there, just chill the F out. Buddy, stay where you are, chill the F out. I swear to you, I'm gonna f this little freak. Let's do it. First game I ran was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. FPS started off great on all three processors, but once we switch it to a scene that has a lot of detail in the shot, that's where you start to see the 5800X 3D break away. However, the 5500 is giving you well over 144 FPS. So if you have a 144 hertz monitor, does it really matter which processor you go with? Once the scene changes and has even more stuff going on, all three CPUs see a drop in FPS. Only the 5800X 3D the 3D never goes below 100. The 5800X 3D is only beating the other two processors out by about 15 FPS at this point of the benchmark. Once the average FPS comes in, the 5500 and 5600X are neck and neck, while the 5800X 3D beats out the 5600X by about 22 FPS. But those numbers are kind of inflated because it was getting about 300 FPS at some points in the benchmark. And let's be honest, most people won't be able to tell between 300, 230, and 180 FPS. Unless you have a 360 
60 hertz monitor. Regardless, all three CPUs did pretty well. So it's about a 21% difference between the lowest end 5500 and the high end 5800X 3D. 17% over the 5600X. Second game I ran was Cyberpunk. Now in this benchmark, I think the FPS is going to be a lot closer. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is more of a CPU dependent test. Cyberpunk, on the other hand, relies more on the GPU. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Now this is ultra settings with ray tracing on, and all three are struggling to even hit 60 FPS. But like I said, it's really on the GPU. And that's okay, because most GPUs struggle to even hit 60 FPS at ultra settings with ray tracing on when playing Cyberpunk. And there was only about a 4 FPS difference between the lowest end CPU and the highest end CPU. The Ryzen 5 5500 has so much heart. It's obviously outgunned, but it's definitely holding its own against these other processors. So if you must have ray tracing on, and you're using the 7800 XT, you may need to turn down the settings to high to medium settings to achieve over 60 FPS. But honestly, that's just kind of how Cyberpunk is. Super GPU heavy, but still very playable with the 7800 XT when paired with any of these CPUs. Third game I ran was Starfield, 1440p ultra settings, and I'm not gonna lie, this game is looking worse and worse the more I play it. The trees just look so fake, every time I die it's just really unrealistic, so I don't know what's happening. But back to the FPS, the two cheaper processors are kinda struggling to hit 60 FPS, while the 5800X 3D is consistently getting above that. Now all three are very playable, and it's interesting to see that the 5500 is keeping up with the 5600X. This processor is turning into the little processor that could. The next game I ran was Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm just gonna show the scores on this one. 1440p ultra settings. The 5800X 3D and the 5600X were neck and neck. I was hoping to see a wider margin, but that wasn't the case. And there's about a 12% difference between the 5500. All three managed to average over 60 FPS, which is pretty good. And the final game I ran was GTA 5. 1440p ultra settings. This is an older game, so you would expect the 7800 XT to perform extremely well when paired with either of these three processors, which was the case for the most part. The 5800X3D and the 5600X were well above 144 frames per second, while the 5500 was slightly under that. Honestly, I wouldn't complain if I had either of these three processors while playing this game. And if you are complaining about it, this is what I have to say to you. Oh, no! So after all these benchmarks, after gaming, for finding out what kind of FPS you get with these processors when paired with the 7800 XT, what does this all mean? So just a quick recap, $300 CPU, $150 CPU, $100 CPU. How do they perform when paired with the 7800 XT, a $500 GPU? Is there any bottlenecks? And if there is, by how much? Realistically speaking, most people buying a $100 CPU aren't going to be pairing with a $500 GPU. Your computer would be kind of like someone who just does arms and doesn't work out their legs. You know, guys that look like triangles. Angles, never skip leg day. However, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance of the 5600X and the 5500. As seen in Cyberpunk, there was only a 4 FPS difference between the 5500 and the 5800X 3D, about a 9 FPS difference in Red Dead Redemption 2. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the margin was a little bigger, but come on, who's gonna complain about 123 FPS? And when you compare the average percentage difference between the games that can give us definitive averages of FPS, between the 5800X 3D and the 5600X, there was a difference of about 8% and between the 5500 it was about 13 and a half percent and remember double the price gives you about 8% better FPS triple the price gives you about 13 and a half percent better FPS hmm so is the 7800 XT too much GPU for these CPUs maybe from a price standpoint it is but from a performance standpoint I have no problem pairing the 5600 X and the 5500 with the 7800 XT a lot of the times the difference in FPS was minimal or you you wouldn't be able to even tell the difference with the naked eye. Obviously, if you're a streamer, content creator that needs to edit videos, or do any 3D rendering, obviously the 5800X 3D is the better choice. But if we're talking about just gaming, the 5500 and the 5600X definitely hold their own and don't really bottleneck a 7800XT by much. So for those people who have these processors and want to upgrade their GPU to a 1440p GPU this holiday season, the 7800XT is definitely a great option. And down the road, you could always upgrade your 5500 or your 5600X to something a little beefier. But as shown in the games we tested today, the performance increase will only be about 8 to 13 and a half percent. Let me know what you guys think. Is the 7800 XT too much GPU for the 5600X or the 5500? I'm gonna have links below on all the parts that I use in this video. But anyways, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. 
If you have any questions, if you have video ideas, let me know in the comments. Me and my boys, Klaus and Valentin, we three put in a lot of work to try to make every video more sicko mode than the last. And like always, have a sicko mode day.